Hello! Today I'll be going over how Drow Ranger's marksmanship actually works. I'm going to go over how the damage is calculated, how the Aghanim Scepter Splinter damage works, as well as some other mechanics that I found interesting. Shout out to this person for suggesting this. If you have any suggestions for something I can go over, let me know. As always, I hope you learned something new with me. Alright, let's learn how Draw Ranger works. Draw Ranger Dota 2. Mm. Oh, the official Dota2.com. That should be good. Wow, this looks awesome. A bunch of stats. Cool videos to show what the spells do, and some information right next to it. Let's see what our Aghanim Scepter does. Causes Drow Ranger's attacks to splinter on the target, hitting up to 0.0 nearby units within a 375.0 range normal attacks that deal reduced damage. Uh, what? When marksmanship procs, the attack ignores all of the main armor on the target, dealing damage as if they had zero. It also provides true strike, which is an attack that can't miss or be evaded. A unit's main armor is the value in white, and their bonus armor is in green. Although it cuts through all of the main armor, the bonus armor will still be able to reduce some of the damage. Marksmanship's bonus damage is considered a conditional attack damage bonus. This is a type of damage in Dota that sounds like what it is. A direct attack damage bonus which is only applied under certain circumstances or conditions, but doesn't show in the HUD. Other types of conditional attack damage that you might recognize are Anti-Mage's Mana Break or Lifestealer's Feast. The attack damage bonus from Marksmanship is not considered by Critical Strike. This means when Draw Ranger attacks an enemy and that hit procs a crit from something like a Chrysalis, and that same hit also procs marksmanship which deals the bonus damage, the calculation will look like this. This means the bonus damage from marksmanship doesn't influence the amount of damage that's calculated from the crit damage. The bonus damage gets added to the total after the crit calculation. If Drow Ranger attacked a unit for 100 damage, and that hit proc marksmanship, as well as critical strike from a chrysalis which deals 160% damage, the total damage would be 200. Even if the unit had 50 main armor, the damage would still be 200 since marksmanship ignores all of the main armor. Like I mentioned before, a unit's bonus armor can still block some of the damage that a marksmanship hit can do. You can do this to calculate how much damage a marksmanship hit would do against bonus damage. And here, total damage refers to the unit's attack damage plus the marksmanship bonus damage. So, if a Drow Ranger's marksmanship attack did a total damage of 100, and the unit had plus 6 bonus armor, the attack would actually do 74, since we subtract the damage reduced by the armor from the total damage. This is also a simple example that assumes there are no other factors considered like damage block. All of this means that Drow Ranger can be great against high agility heroes like Terrorblade or Morphling, since they usually have high main armor, and weaker against low agility tanky heroes who often get lots of bonus armor, like Axe or Centaur. Marksmanship uses pseudo-random distribution. This means that the proc chance increases every time it does not occur, but is lowered in the first place as compensation. This results in the effects occurring more consistently. Here's a pretty good example from the wiki to help understand how pseudo-random works. On melee heroes, Skullbasher's Bash has a 25% chance to stun the target. On the first attack, however, it only has about 8.5% probability to bash. Each subsequent attack without a bash increases the probability by about 8.5%. So on the second attack, the chance is about 17%. On the third, it is about 25.5%, etc. After a bash occurs, the probability resets to about 8.5% for the next attack. These probabilities average out so that, over a moderate period of time, bash effect procs nearly 25% of the time. There are actually lots of pseudo-random events in Dota, including all evasion sources and even the drop chance of neutral items. Unlike Dota2.com, 
The real description of Drow Ranger's Aghanim Scepter upgrade is that successful attacks release two splinter projectiles within a 375 radius on random enemies around the attacked target. The splinter attacks do 50% of the base attack damage, which doesn't include the marksmanship bonus damage. This means that the damage that's done to the splinter target is reduced by the armor from both targets. But, since each splinter attack is technically its own separate attack, it can also proc marksmanship, although it's not visually different like the main attack and it won't splinter like the main attack does. The splinter only happens once on the targeted unit. If the splinter attack does proc marksmanship, it'll ignore the main armor like it does on the targeted unit. Splinter attacks can also proc any attack damage modifier like Corruption, Critical Strike, Lifesteal, and even Bash if you're feeling wild. The attacks do not splinter to invisible, invulnerable, or hidden units. So, even if you have detection of an enemy that's invis, if you attack a target next to the invis unit, they won't get hit by a splinter. It still sends a splinter to them, but doesn't hit them, which is strange and unfortunate since it basically wastes a splinter attack. Splinter attacks cannot hit couriers, buildings, wards, allied units, or units in fog of war, but it can splinter off of them to nearby targets. It can also splinter off of things like Phoenix Egg, a dying tombstone or zombies, and Weaver Swarm bugs. When Drow Ranger attacks a unit using Frost Arrows, the splinter hits will also apply Frost Arrows. The game checks to see if Frost Arrows was on when the instant attack from the splinter is performed. This means if Drow Ranger attacks a unit without using Frost Arrows, but then either turns on Autocast or queues up another attack that has Frost Arrows before the Splinter Instant attack happens, it'll actually apply Frost Arrows to the splintered units, even though it didn't for the main unit that was attacked. Doing this also doesn't use any mana from Frost Arrows. I'm not sure if this is intended or I just brought attention to this and now it'll get patched, but it does kind of make sense based on how the check works, it's just a bit strange. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing for more videos like this. I made a few other videos similar to this, which you can find links to in the description, so maybe go check them out. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new with me.